Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here. Recently, I have been kind of obsessed <laughs> with watching cleaning, decluttering, organizing videos on YouTube, as well as some home decor interior design videos here on YouTube. And I also watch them on TikTok. I'm all about moving towards living simply and like a more minimal lifestyle. I wouldn't classify myself as a minimalist, but a more minimal lifestyle. I need to have a clean home so my anxiety isn't as bad. I've really been into watching a lot of these videos on YouTube, but something that I've seen over and over again, or really haven't seen, is especially like the interior design. Don't necessarily take into account of people living there, or especially with animals. Jesse and I, we have three dogs, and I see a lot of these really, really nice and beautiful trends for interior design, or just like cleaning hacks, or whatever but it's not super practical if you have animals. I know that I have made a choice to have three dogs and I will never own a white couch because I don't want to have to clean it all the time, even though white couches are super in right now. I don't see a lot of these videos acknowledging animals and if they do, they just say, oh, well, just clean your couch. It's so easy to clean your couch. It's so time consuming to clean your couch. So I wanted to make a video for me and hopefully this will help you if you are a pet owner. I want to get into my tips on how I have a clean and tidy home with three dogs. The first tip is two words, leather furniture. And by leather, I mean faux leather. Jesse and I, we used to have a fabric couch. I don't know what the actual like what you would call the, but it's a fabric couch. It was actually a sectional. We really liked the couch. We loved that sectional. There wasn't really anything wrong with it except dog hair. All three of our dogs shed to different levels, I guess. The pug, Lucy, she sheds the most out of all of them actually. But when we had this couch, I found myself vacuuming it like, every single day. I'm not kidding. Every single day. It was very in because it was a more gray color. It was a sectional. Sectionals are very in. But the maintenance of this couch was driving me insane. I don't want to sit on the couch and have hair just like fluff around me. So yeah, I pretty much vacuumed that couch by hand almost every single day. I should also mention that our dogs are allowed on the furniture, our dogs sleep on our bed. We're those people, okay? So I knew that one day I, whenever we get new living room furniture, I would like to have faux leather. And we were actually gifted our couch, love seat, and we also have a leather chair in our living room. Let me tell you how much easier it is to maintain leather furniture than it was to maintain this like fabric cloth furniture. The big difference is I don't have to vacuum this couch anymore where I would have to get the vacuum out, the handheld thing, and I would move the cushions out of the way. And I mean, maybe you take the cushions off and throw them in the washer. Like there was a whole process. Now, especially when I'm in a hurry or I'm just tidying up, I just Swiffer the couch. That's all I have to do. I take the Swiffer, I collect all the dog hair on the Swiffer, and then that's it. And whenever I do want to give my couch a more deep clean, I do have leather like wipes for leather furniture. Um, and it, it does make it a lot easier to clean and just not have all that dog hair around you anymore. And I know you can't just run out and buy all new furniture all of a sudden. Let's just throw everything away and buy leather furniture because a lady on YouTube told me to. No, I know that's not real. We're all on budgets. I totally understand. But like I said, we were gifted or really these pieces of furniture were broken and were going to be thrown away and we fixed them and now we have leather furniture. So definitely check out garage sales, Facebook marketplace, those kinds of stores if you don't want to go out and buy new pieces of furniture. And I'm also saying this as someone who does not have 
all leather furniture. Our living room furniture is probably the most used. We sit in it every single day because we watch TV every day. Our dogs sit in on the couch with us. If we have people over, we're sitting on the couches. It's our most heavily used pieces of furniture. But we also have a couch upstairs in our loft area that's not a leather couch. And we actually bought that one new but our dogs don't really get on that couch, like hardly ever, because if they're upstairs, they're gonna go lay on our bed over that couch, because it is smaller. And we have two chairs in our like entryway in our dining room. The dogs, specifically Lucy, love laying on those chairs, but they're not leather either. So I understand it's not easy to say, oh, we'll just get leather furniture, we're making moves to having more manageable or just low maintenance items in our home in general. So I'm looking at maybe recovering the chairs that I currently have with like a leather material. I don't know yet, but I would rather vacuum like two smaller chairs than like my entire sectional again, if that makes sense. So if you are on the market for new furniture and you have dogs, that shed, I honestly, I think even if I didn't have dogs, I would still opt for more of a leather or a faux leather piece because of how easy it is to clean. The second tip I have is to have an entry ray, entry way rug by your back door. Now our entry way rug is a little beat up because as soon as the like fabrics, like little strings start to happen, Lucy takes it as a sign that she should dig the rug for us, which is super annoying, but whatever, we're working with it. We put a rug by our back door. We also have one of those like welcome mats on the other side of our back door. And I have this here because the back door sees a lot of traffic. Our dogs go outside multiple times a day. Sometimes they have muddy paws. Sometimes it's raining so they have wet paws. Or like there's a lot of clay soil here in North Carolina so they'll have like clay stained paws. And they'll come running back into our house and it doesn't take all of the dirt and paw prints like off of your floors, but just covering the surface of our floors helps a little bit, helps them kind of run over the carpet first before hitting the hardwoods. Does it totally get rid of wet paw prints? No, but it does help. And it's easy to throw this rug. It, it The one that we have, we got it at Target. We've gotten some at Kohl's. They're very affordable. They are machine washable as well. So you are able to just throw it in the wash and that's it. <laughs> it makes it, again, very low maintenance to keep up with and clean, and it does help to an extent keep all of the muddy paw prints off of your floors. My third tip is a little bit pricey, as I just talked about getting leather furniture. Something that has been a pretty big game changer, and I don't use that word lightly, has been getting a robot vacuum. Whether that's a Shark or a Roomba, I prefer the Shark brand over the like iRobot Roomba brand. I do have both. They were both gifted to me. So one is upstairs, one is downstairs. I prefer the Shark. I think it's a little bit quieter than the Roomba, but I could just have like older model of Roomba. I don't know. With these robot vacuums, it makes it really easy for just a daily maintenance of vacuuming. Like I said, we have three dogs who all shed. So dog hair is just ingrained in the fabric of our being at this point. Sometimes I don't like seeing the little tumbleweeds tumble across the floor, the tumbleweeds of dog hair that is. So it's easy for me to either schedule these robot vacuum things. I know there's apps, I, I haven't done that, but you can, you can schedule them for the same time every single day. So it's really easy to go over and press the button and it will do a nice like overall vacuuming of your space. Now is this as good as me physically vacuuming like taking out my vacuum and moving things out of the way and vacuuming? No. It's not as detailed as that. But is it a really great maintenance option? Absolutely. It cuts down on the hair significantly, so when I do bring out my vacuum, it's not as big of a deal. There's not hair everywhere. So if you can 
swing getting a robot vacuum, I highly recommend them, especially if you have pets with dog hair or cat hair. I absolutely love mine. I can't imagine my life without it. I do know that oftentimes on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, even maybe Amazon Prime days, these robot vacuums will be on sale. So as we are entering slowly into the holiday season, I would just be on a lookout for a sale for one of these if you're looking to pick one up. I love mine. Tip number four is to have plug-in air fresheners. Now this isn't really a cleaning tip, more as like a smelling good tip. I have just like those Airwick plug-in fresheners in my home because I don't want it to smell like I have three dogs. And sometimes, you know, your dogs are outside and they're eating dirt. My dogs love to eat dirt. And they come inside and they smell funky and you don't want that in your air. So either invest in those plug-in air fresheners. I've seen people on TikTok take the like car fresheners that you put into the vent and actually put it in the vents in your room. And so as like your AC is blowing through, like it will, I was gonna say light up with scent. <laughs> it will make your room smell good. So if that's an option, if you don't want a plug-in air freshener, great option there. Even just getting like wax melts or candles, like the old fashioned way, you know, helps freshen up your room. I like the plug-in air fresheners because I plug them in, I forget about them, and I just have to wait until they're empty and then I refill them. Before I got these plug-in air fresheners, I just noticed my house wasn't smelling fresh. Even if I just cleaned it and it was in pristine condition, it just wasn't smelling like nice and fragrant, I guess. But since putting these plug-in air fresheners in, I actually get compliments from people. They walk into my home and they're like, wow, it smells amazing in here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thanks. So I recommend these for anybody. And then especially if you have animals, because like I said, I don't want it to smell like, oh, you have animals, you know what I mean? But I also have wax melt warmer things. I have candles that I love to light. I love things smelling good because it really does help with how you feel in your space. You know what I mean? Like I feel calm and it smells fresh and it feels cozy and I just, I like smelly good things, okay? Tip number five is something that we recently started doing and we have two comforters on our bed. Like I mentioned before, our dogs sleep on our bed, not in our bed, on our bed every single night and during the day, I'm upstairs in our office where I currently am now, and my, our dogs are on the bed sleeping, <laughs> like right over there in our master bedroom sleeping on a bed. Whenever we, we would go to bed, we just noticed there would be a lot of dog hair on the comforter, and you know, you just don't want to crawl into bed covered in dog hair, like dog hair's in your mouth, like it's everywhere. So what we have started to do is have a decorative comforter on top of our bed at all times. And so if the dogs wanna run in there and lay on the bed, it's totally fine. And then at night we fold down that comforter to the like foot of the bed and we are slowly trying to train Lucy to only lay on that comforter blanket. Now she's very defiant. If she had it her way, she would like sleep on our faces. She's done pretty well with this actually. I'm actually pretty surprised with how well she's done with this. Now, whenever we fold down the nice hairy comforter, we have a comforter and the sheets that don't have hair in them and it feels a lot cleaner. And then of course, having two sets of comforters is nice just in case your dog is sick. That happens sometimes and they are sick on your bed. You can just wrap that comforter up and you do have a spare. So it's nice for that. If you don't want to buy two comforters, my husband makes fun of me because I bought two comforters for one bed. So if you're like him, maybe just get a decorative blanket that you cover your bed with and can fold down at night rather than like a whole comforter. The next tip, I live and breathe this product. It's a handheld kind of like handheld cleaning device. It's like a handheld washer device. I will put a picture of what I mean here. I I bought this, honestly, I bought it to clean my old sectional. This 
handheld device is amazing for carpets, for couches, chairs, upholstery, like pretty much anything. We use it on our rugs. If my pet has an accident or they're sick or something happens, we whip this out. You can put in a certain solution or honestly, I've just put in like laundry detergent in this before. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. So don't like follow me if that's wrong, but I'm just saying that's what I've done in the past. It, it takes the stains out. I don't know what kind of voodoo magic it has but I use this on the stairs because sometimes a dog will have an accident on the stairs or honestly I have tripped going upstairs with a full cup of coffee and just spilt it all over the stairs it it works for that too so not just for pets for clumsy people like me as well highly recommend getting one I got I think I got mine from Amazon I believe it's the Hoover brand but there's so many different brands and if you have animals it's so nice to quickly clean up stains with this so highly, highly recommend this product. The next thing that we do in order to maintain a clean home is we clean our dogs regularly. And this may seem like a duh kind of tip, but we have a routine for our dog's baths. We bathe our dog every X amount of per week and if it's been raining a lot, even if we just gave them a bath, it's been raining a lot, they've been muddy, we're gonna give them a bath. We have we bathe our dogs fairly regularly so they smell good because you know when your dog does not smell good, maybe they were rolling around in something outside and then they come inside, jump on the couch and roll around on your throw blanket now that throw blanket smells like them. And just to try to get around that, we bathe our dogs regularly. And we also have kind of like a smelly good spray for them. I think it's a deodorizing spray. We spray that after they get baths. So when they are clean, it helps contribute to the overall cleanliness of our home. And the last tip in order to stay tidy in our home is we have designated spaces for our dog's things. Now we have dog beds kind of scattered throughout our home, but what I'm talking about is dog toys and their bowls, food, other items like that. They're barking right now. They're just gonna bark, okay? They see something outside, I can't stop them. So we have a designated cabinet in our kitchen actually to have their dog food, their dog bowls, treats. So we have all of that in one little basket in that cabinet. We also have some dog wipes, some calming things. Like we have a designated space to put all of our dog things things. And then we have a little basket in our home to throw all their dog toys in as well. Now, if you go into my house and you pick up every single dog toy and put it in that basket, they will be like, actually, I wanted all of those on the floor and they will go and pull a bunch of them out. But we have a designated space for that. So in a pinch, if I'm tidying up, I can grab all of them and dump them in the basket and we're good to go. I think that has been a huge way to have an overall tidiness of our home. So if you don't have room like in a, a cabinet in your kitchen, you can also buy maybe a little stand and that's like the dog's stuff. You can put their leashes, you can put all of their things all in one place. If you keep it organized and maintain it, it's easier to maintain in the long run. I like being able to also close their stuff in a cabinet because a lot of our dog things are not very aesthetic and I just like to kind of shut it behind a door and leave it. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're looking to keep a clean and tidy home but still have dogs and like people live in your house and not everything is Instagram worthy, I'm all for normalizing normal homes. My house is not very aesthetic every second of every single day, but I am, you know, working towards living a more minimal, intentional, and just like overall tidy life. So I've implemented these tips into my own personal life and I hope that you found this helpful. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!